Mist Valley Arts and Entertainment. Passion Burns. Help us be a bonfire for your soul. All right, hello everybody. This is Dread from Mist Valley Arts and Entertainment. We're also called Mist Valley Gaming, but we do more than just gaming. I am here fresh back from uh, hearing the gentleman you see right up here, Old Guard. First time I got the chance to hear them live. I was looking forward to this and uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the experience and I will leave some links down below to Old Guard. If you never checked them out, you should do so. Um, let's just say, let's say, uh, well, they, uh, they were at the uh, Runaways Lounge in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. That's where they, uh, they are from Kelowna. And uh, that's where they play tonight. Tonight being uh, June 15th, 2023. If you're interested in what the date is, in case you're watching this at a later date. Probably are. <laughs> so uh, my experience is I uh, uh, I stayed for them. They were the opening act and I, I left when they were done. Uh, reasons for that are, reasons for the capital R, um, I'm in my 50s. I've got bad back, bad hips, bad knees, and bad ankles. And, uh, yeah, I did get a lot of sleep the night before, and, yeah, just, I, I had 70-minute drive. I lived the next town over, 70-minute drive to get to the venue. I'd never been there before, and I've got a lot of anxieties as well. Uh, the last few years, I have not got out in crowds of people that I don't know at all. So this was actually kind of a big step for me, getting out. Uh, it was good, though. Um, went to support my buddy Steve, who's the fellow over on the left of the picture. I will introduce uh, the band members for those of, you, those of you who do not know them. But first, let me tell you about the, the, the venue. is called the Runaways Lounge. Unfortunately, the Runaways Lounge has one more act, I believe, happening tomorrow night, and then it's closing. Um, I understand it's just had a little bit of a trouble keeping open. I think it may have reopened last year, maybe around this time as well, after I've been shut down for a while, taken over by new management, and it's closing down again. Uh, the death of live music is a real thing, unfortunately. So get out and support local bands. Um, so uh, Old Guard was playing first. Up after them was Ark and Fire, which I believe is another Kelowna band. I have never heard them that I'm aware of. And then Iron Kingdom was the act from Vancouver coming through. They uh, have a record deal, I believe. And uh, we're doing a tour of Canada. Um, again, I've never heard Iron Kingdom. Um and I would have loved to stay for those two, uh, you know, those two bands if I had been in a better headspace and uh, better physical shape and, you know, life. But as it was, I really went to see Old Guard. Um, Old Guard is a uh, fellow on the left of the picture there is Steve Bifford, guitarist. Uh, Steve is the uh, guitarist for if you're from the Kelowna area or from Western Canada or even the Western United States. You may be familiar with Severed Serenity. Um, that is a heavy metal band that Steve founded and he had for many years. Um, it was uh, very much based around the band Death. Uh, Steve was a big uh, fan of Chuck Schuldinger, of uh, guitarist from Death, and uh, was kind of a, a more of an extreme metal act, I guess you could say. Um, not as extreme as some, but still an extreme metal act. I very much supported that act. Um, his second guitarist at the time, David Bonnycastle, actually became uh, my first boss in the job I now hold and have had for the last 20 years now. So my career ended up. So uh, thank you for that, David, if you're uh, listening to this. By the way, hi. Uh, <laughs> yes, still working there. Um, so Steve is an amazing guitarist, but he's even a more amazing person. I've known Steve for, God, 33 years, I think it is now. Uh, the last few years, we've kind of fallen apart. Uh, we live in separate towns now, whereas we didn't before. And just life, and you, you get older, and you don't get out as much, and you don't reach out as much, and shit happens. So it was really good when I heard about this, to be able to take the time off work and just uh, go in for the evening and uh, go in and just support them and hear what the band sounded like. So that's excellent. Steve was a great guitarist, by the way. And like I say, a great person. A uh, fellow in the middle is Richard Angus McKenzie. It goes by the pseudonym Corpus Uper. And Corpus, if I'm getting that pronounced wrong, I do apologize. Shoot me a message with the uh, pro proper pronunciation if I'm getting it wrong. Um, I know Corpus is a gamer. I believe he has a gaming site of some kind as well. I should know more about that considering I run a gaming channel. My apologies. Um, he does vocals and bass. Um, and um, does it say what else he was involved? I mean, I know these guys have all been around the music scene for quite a while. Um, yeah, it doesn't say right here on this uh, website what Corpus was involved in before. Has been involved in other bands. Um, 
And the fellow on the right then would be Derek Meyer. And I've heard Derek's name more than I've heard Richard's name. I, I know Derek's been around bands, and Steve has mentioned him in the past before, going years back. I've heard his name. Not familiar with what bands he was in. But again, uh, these are three experienced musicians. They got together, and they called themselves Old Guard. Like, brilliant. Old Guard. Old, oh, my hand doesn't go up that far. Old guard. Like, they are the old guard. They are the experienced guys. Now, let me just say this. Um, they're a power trio. And if you don't know anything about power trios, let me just tell you this. If you do not have a one spot-on professional excellent musicianship, don't get involved in a power trio. Because it'll suck. Power trios are great. The ones you know, you know because they are awesome. All the rest of them, you don't know because they faded away and died a quick death. With only three members on stage. Which, by the way, these guys are old enough, I think they probably figured out. Stages and venues are getting smaller and smaller, I swear. And these guys are like, hey, why have five guys on stage when you can have four? And why have four guys on stage when you can just have three really good guys on stage? More room. More room to show your talents as well. I think it works for them very, very well. Um, what was I saying? I don't remember. So it says here on the Facebook that Old Guard mixes big chorus anthemic rock with old school metal. So they get influences such as Black Label Society, Caius, Deftones, Judas Priest, Alice in Chains, and more. They have released an album or are releasing, are releasing an album. I'm not sure when that was written. I know they've got a demo out. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the album they're talking about on Facebook. I'm not sure. I'll have to touch base with Steve on that one. So I went to the club. I got there a little bit early, about a half hour early. Um, kind of hung out inside for five minutes, and then I spent the next 25 minutes outside because claustrophobic crowds, people I don't know, you know, thinking to myself, wow, why did I quit smoking pot 30 years ago? I can really use some now. <laughs> Calm the fuck down. Um, but what I'm saying is, yeah, my, my anxiety was getting a lot the best of me. Steve did wonder by, talked to me for a bit. That was cool. Uh, I wish I had more time to talk to him. But uh, I got to admit, I really just wanted to bail after I heard uh, heard the stuff from Olgard. So I did. So my apologies to uh, Ark and Fire and uh, Iron, oh crap, Iron, Iron, what was it? Damn it. Iron Kingdom. My apologies to them for not sticking around. Um the Runaways Lounge, the acoustics was, um, man, it was average acoustically. Um, uh, not the best sound. Um, it is what it is. And lots of people there, lots of people there talking because the bar, um, you know, whatever. I, uh, I did not get any pictures of the set or any video. I, I really, I hung out at the near the back where I could still see, but. Just trying to stay out of the way and away from basically everybody because that's kind of the headspace I was in. I was just trying to go, like, enjoy the set, get there, watch the set, listen to the set, enjoy the set, get the fuck out. That's the kind of the headspace I was in. So I did what I did because uh, when you've got anxieties and you've got different shit you're dealing with, you you do what you got to do to get by. So um, I want to talk about the drummer first, Derek. Um, the drums. The drum sound, I I gotta say, I, I'm not sure I've seen many drummers live who hit as hard as Derek does. Um, now, I'd love to see more of this band to see, was that just a one-off? Was I imagining it? I don't think I was. I think he hits the drums very, very hard, and I don't get the feeling like that's something he just tries to do. I get the feeling like that's just his natural style. He's just a heavy hitter. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it is a ferocious drum sound. Um, it reminded me of... Um, reminded me of early Guns N' Roses. Really, reminded me of Steven Adler's style. Um, not, not so much the same style, but the way he attacks the drum set. Um, I would compare it to... Getting attacked, attacked by a giant dog with a shark mouth. And this dog just rows of teeth, clamps down on you, and begins to shake you back and forth to the beat, not letting go. That's what Derek does on the drum kit. That's what I'm getting out of this. 
Uh, I got no problem with the drums at all. I enjoyed the drumming. Now, Richard, or Corpus Uper, oh, hopefully that's close to right. Can I call you Corpus? <laughs> um, had a, I, I'm an amateur bass player, so I paid attention to the bass. He, Richard is a damn good bass player, and I had heard that he was a guitarist first and foremost. I don't know how long he's been playing the bass or how long he's considered himself to be a bass player. But dude plays the bass like he's a bass player, not a guitar. So I'm just going to say that. And that, Richard, is a compliment. Um, I don't, I'm not able to really lock down a style for him. I, I'm not, not sure that he really reminds me of anyone offhand, which kind of bugs me because as an amateur bass player, love to be a better bassist, love the bass, hate to practice. <laughs> Confession time. Um, as an amateur bass player and someone who loves the bass, I would love to be able to tell you that I know right who he sounds for, uh, like or who his influences are. I can't tell you. I, I just, I can't. I'm not able to pick it up. Maybe if I heard him more, I would. Or maybe his influences on bass are people I'm not really aware of. So that's entirely possible. Um, damn good bass player, though. He is quite able to take the lead in a song, which in a power trio is very fucking important. Um... And he's just as likely to uh, settle down into the groove and just unite the bass, drums, vocals, and guitars all together with the bass line like proper bass player does. Uh, just a great, great bass player. Uh, Steve on guitars. Look, I love Steve's guitar playing. I, I I, was there when Steve was writing his first song before Severed Serenity even. I got to hear him write a lot of his stuff. Not all of it, but some of it. Uh, very honored for that. I love Steve's guitar playing. I loved him in Severed Serenity. I supported him big time in that band. But I will tell you, I really believe this band and this style of music actually suits Steve's playing better than Severed Serenity did. And I hope he doesn't take any offense to that. I actually think it's easier to tell how damn good of a guitarist he is listening to him do this stuff than it is Severed Serenity. And I love metal and I love extreme metal. I love Severed Serenity. Um, I got to many of their shows. I got many of their albums. I mean, I listen to them still at home. You know, like I'm familiar with that stuff. It's not like I have trouble discerning what's what. Um, I just think sometimes Severed Serenity, when they play live, were so focused on being as loud as possible, volume-wise, that it would distort things through the speakers and through the echoes, and it made it tougher for non-musicians, or probably for most part, to really be able to tell how well the music was being played. And I think that was a drawback. I think um, you could tell better on the, the albums, the demos that Severus Randy put out, how good a guitarist Steve was. Um, but I think sometimes the live shows didn't show that off the way it should have. And I think this style of music and the playing he's doing here really shows not only his versatility, but his extreme excellence and experience. Um, I really think Steve is one of those guys where I, I've known him for so long and I, I'm like, music business cutthroat. How did Steve never get a record deal? How did Steve never become a rock star? And it's, it's sad that so many people who are so good, like these three gentlemen, don't usually get that opportunity. Now, Again, talking about power trios, um, these guys are excellent together. I think when you are an excellent musician on your own and you decide you're going to be in a power trio, um, there has to be an ebb and flow unlike any other band situation. The music has to flow together. The bass and the guitar have to flow and they have to intermingle and change and flow throughout what's going on. The guitar and the drums have to do the same thing. The bass and the drums have to do the same thing. And the singing has to touch each and every one of those instruments as well. By the way, Steve also does backup vocals. Nice to hear that. Nice to see him back doing some vocals. I enjoy it. He's got his uh, kind of deep, raspy, uh, severed serenity type uh, backup vocals he does. I like it. It adds something to the. I like it. And uh, we haven't really talked about vocals, Richard's vocals, Corpus's uh, vocals. Um, there are different vocal styles that he uses, but overall, the one that stands out most is probably Sully from Godsmack. And that's what most of the time 
I'd say 70% of the time I'm hearing a Sully influence or, or his voice is just naturally kind of pitched and toned much the same way. I don't know if that's something, Richard, you've worked at yourself to sound like Godsmack or other bands maybe that sound similar or with your vocals or if that's just a, a naturally how your voice developed. But it's really good. I, I enjoyed it quite much. Um, what else do I want to say? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I enjoyed getting out. I am sorry that I, I did. wasn't in a better headspace. I was sorry I didn't have more chance to talk to Steve and meet the other guys in the band. Um, sorry I didn't have uh, more chance to uh, experience the Runaways Lounge on one of its last nights. It's going to be open the first time I've ever been there. Um, you know, and uh, sorry I didn't get a chance to hear the other bands. Uh, that kind of thing. But uh, you know what? Mental health, man, is important. And sometimes when crazy is all you got, and sometimes crazy is all you got, sometimes, sometimes when crazy is all you got, you better count your blessings and hold on to it like fuck. And I just came up with that on the way home. And I'm like, that should be on my T-shirt. Sometimes when crazy is all you got, count your blessings, hold on to it like fuck. Uh, you know, don't deny crazy. I'm not feeling well mental health-wise. I'm going to get out, do everything I can, fight through that, and then I get back into my my safe spot and just be safe. <laughs> so old guard. Um, I, I got to hear their stuff before Steve played me some of their stuff. I've heard the demo. Um, now I've, I got a chance to check out the website. Um, now I've had a chance to hear them live. I hope to hear them live more, more, more often, uh, some more times. And uh, if you're in the Kelowna area or maybe they'll play outside of Kelowna as well. I know they play, uh, what, Penticton, but Vernon, probably those places. I, I'm sure they'd love to get out and play Vancouver sometime in a few other spots, um, wherever they can get asked to go, as long as the, the money is okay for them to get there and do it. I'm sure they would. Uh, these guys, again, are professional, professional musicians. And I say that in the terms of, hey, they get paid for their gigs, <laughs> but, but they are professional in the way they handle themselves and their instruments, their songwriting, their performance. And if you like hard rock and heavy metal, the 80s, I would say influences wise what I heard. Oh, and I wanted to point out Steve's guitar playing, by the way, I didn't mention it. He most reminded me at times of Glenn Tipton from Judas Priest. And I find that really interesting that I came up with that tonight because I like Judas Priest, but Glenn Tipton's not even my favorite guitarist to Judas Priest. That would be K.K. Downing. But for some reason, Steve was reminding me of Glenn Tipton tonight. So I think you'll probably take that as a compliment. Um, my my ear heard influences from Deftones, Alice in Chains, um, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Godsmack. I want to say a little bit of saliva. Uh, you know, maybe some other, I don't know, man. There's some other bands in there that they sound like as well, but um yeah, yeah, they got uh, they got a lot of the influences running through the hard rock slash heavy metal stuff. And uh, if you get a chance to see him, I think you'll enjoy them. So, Old Guard, thank you very much for entertaining me. I was happy to get to see you for the first time. Can't wait for my second. From Miss Valley Arts and Entertainment, also called Miss Valley Gaming, my name is Dredd. Everybody, I'm out of here. Bye-bye. <laughs>